Hello everyone, this is Catchpole here. Really excited because I'm going to be reading you day eight of our brilliant Advent story, which is called How Winston Delivered Christmas. Let's start. The chapter's called Thinking Big Thoughts. Oh, bother, thought Winston glumly from upside down and tummy deep in a snowdrift. Then he felt a slight pinch on the end of his tail and found himself being plucked free from the snow. A shiver of dread shimmied down his whole body and he squeezed his eyes tightly shut so he couldn't see who or what was pulling him free. I'm probably going to be gobbled up, he panicked. But no gobbling came, not even a nibble. Instead, he was placed carefully on the ground and after a few seconds, he decided he'd be brave and have a peek through his eyelashes. Oh, he squeaked opening up his eyes wide. What was standing in front of him wasn't a monster about to eat him up, but a pigeon, a big plump pigeon who was looking at him with her head tilted to one side. Oh, good, she cooed. You're okay, I was ever so worried for a moment. I didn't mean to startle you and make you fall, but you were sitting up there. She flapped a wing in the general direction of the bare winter tree. And I said to myself, now, what's going on there, Edna? I'm Edna, by the way. And I saw you start to climb up those windows. And I said, oh, there's going to be a terrible accident in a minute. What with you being so tiny and climbing up so high? And those windows in this weather can be ever so slippy. So I said to myself, I'm going to go and see what's happening. Didn't I, George? 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 Edna squinted up at the tree again. Oh, she eventually continued. He's up there. Then she squawked, George, so loudly that Winston almost found himself knocked off his feet again. A couple of seconds later, a sleepy and slightly grumpy voice came from the heights of the tree, accompanied by some fluttering. All right, I'm on my way. Keep your feathers on. A short moment later, a robin landed next to Winston. Well, he thought it was a robin because it had lovely red feathers on its chest, but it was so plump, it looked like a small feathery tennis ball with a beak and two tiny stick legs coming out of the bottom of it. This is George, said Edna. I'm George, George yawned. As I was saying, continued Edna. We saw you and we wondered what on earth you were up to. It's Christmas Eve and you should be tucked up asleep somewhere cosy. Well, yes, said Winston, but you see, I have a, a very important job to do tonight. He dashed over to fetch the envelope and showed it to Edna and George. He explained all about how he'd found it and that he needed to deliver it to Father Christmas at the North Pole before midnight. That's when he sets off to deliver all the Christmas presents around the world, Winston said. He glanced back up at the travel agent's window and sighed. But the North Pole is an awfully long way from here. And according to that globe up there, it's across an ocean. And I don't think I'll be able to find a boat to get me there in time. It's already getting quite late. Saying that out loud suddenly made Winston feel very sad and disappointed. If the envelope didn't get there, whoever had written the letter wouldn't have a very happy Christmas the next day. Edna saw Winston's whiskers wobble and his ears go a bit floppy. He looked so forlorn and droopy. Well, she thought, that just won't do. Now, she said. Let's not get ahead of ourselves and down the, let's not get ourselves down in the dumps. Every problem has a solution, doesn't it, George? George, who had been having 40 winks leaning against Edna, started, then quickly agreed with her. Oh, yes, he said, a solution. Edna wandered around in a circle, thinking big thoughts. Then she let out an excited squawk. Oh, how silly I've been she cried, fluffing herself up. Follow me. And with that, she started to stalk very briskly down Mistletoe Street. 
Winston looked at George and George looked at Winston. They didn't know what was happening, but they realized that the best thing would be to do what she said. Winston took the envelope under his arm again. Then he and George started off down the street after their friend. Are we going to the North Pole? Winston panted as he scampered behind Edna. No, cooed Edna without slowing down. No need to go there, my dear. I'm pretty sure that Father Christmas is already here in the city. And that's the end of my chapter, Warden Hill. I can't wait to find out what happens in the next chapter, can you? Hope you all have a lovely Christmas. Bye.